Now, one story that caught my eye uh, was a piece written in The Telegraph by um, Arif Ahmed, who is, uh, used to be a Cambridge University professor, but he is now the Office for Students Director. So it's his job to, uh, to oversee free speech on campuses. And he's written a piece specifically in the aftermath of um, the uh, atrocious events we've seen in Israel about anti-Semitism and about how students who call for genocide will not be protected. Now, we're joined by um, by the wonderful Sam Armstrong from Free Speech Union to talk about this sort of story. Sam, thank you for joining us this morning. What did you make of, uh, of Mr Ahmed's piece? I, I thought it was quite illuminating. Yeah, but almost staggering that it's even necessary. Mm. We seem to have developed a situation in our universities, which are meant to be the very crucible of debate, in which uh, calls for the genocide of Jewish people are defended by university heads and yet conservative colleagues of yours MPs are banned or barred from speaking on campus where you know perfectly ordinary views that are in the far beyond the mainstream they, they are the mainstream view of the British public are, are somehow considered beyond the pale and it's really strange that universities most of all have been the place where this kind of real societal confusion has erupted Mm -hmm. Well, as you say, universities have always been bastions of free speech, free thought and debate. And yet it seems like there has been a rise in this no platforming, particularly of people who are either on the right wing or have those gender critical views, doesn't it? Yeah, and so much so that the government, you and your colleagues, have felt the need to legislate mm -hmm. so that now universities that cancel speakers unreasonably can be fined up to 2% of their annual turnover. So if you're the LSE, that's tens of millions of pounds. So, uh, you, you know, quite a big sum of money that universities could be fined and, and good on it. Mm -hmm. But you then got the other side, and, and the law is really clear, you can ban people that are calling for violence. And there are some people that seem to be quite prepared to go onto university campuses and call for the genocide of either the Jewish people or Israeli people. And universities seem to think, oh, well, yes, but you've all been saying that we need to give free speech. So now you can waltz onto campus, you can make Jewish students terrified, mm. terrified to go into their classes, and you can act with impunity. And it, it, just, it just seems mad, both, I think, to myself and to the general public, that that's where it is. Mm -hmm. A degree of common sense surely is deliverable on, on a topic like this. Well, this is why we need you here on Talk TV, the home of common sense, to instill a bit of that into this debate. Now, we saw a piece today, I hope you caught it, by, um, by Robert Jenrick, of course, former um, immigration minister, but prior to that, he was the community secretary, um, talking specifically about anti-Semitism and how we absolutely must do more to tackle it on campuses. Now, Many of us will have seen the, the kind of terrible scenes from the, the US hearing with uh, the presidents of kind of Penn State and Harvard and MIT effectively saying that, um, you know, to, to, to kind of call for genocide, whether that's seen as harassment is based on the circumstances, which, you know, doesn't seem very common sense to me. And yet um, Robert Jenrick in his piece here has actually talked about um, some examples himself that we've seen in the UK. I mean, it's appalling, isn't it, that this is happening close to home? Yeah, and there are a strain of speakers, and I regret to say this, but particularly from the Islamist side of the movement, Islamist, those that believe that political Islam ought to be the basis of, uh, of the way our society is governed, who keep continually going on to campus. You've got extreme hate preachers and saying horrendous and horrible things. Now, I say there should be quite a high bar so that anybody can come and speak at universities and you challenge and you dispute and you debate those ideas. But there are certain people whose history really ought to mark them out. And I think if you've been preaching hate against Jews in, in the recent past, given the extreme and extraordinary risk of terrorist attacks, we saw a, a Hamas-linked plot uh, busted across Europe, that there needs to be very careful attention given to what kind of extremist, hateful, potentially terroristic rhetoric is getting preached to vulnerable young people, including in our universities. Mm -hmm. Now, a broader question for you, of course, you're from the, the Free Speech Union, and a, a very puritanical approach to free speech would be allowing anyone and everyone to have their say, regardless of how distasteful or kind of regardless of the consequences. But in things like this, where it's calling for the glorification of, of terror attacks, for example, how do we find that red line? 
Look, there's no doubt it's tricky, and I can give you a glib answer that says, well, it's calls for imminent violence that, that are the problem. I don't think they, they draw so neatly and tidily. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I don't think it sh should be banned to say the British Army should go and invade any particular country if we if we think so that's a call for violence that should be permitted at the same time i don't think it's acceptable to to call people to be subjected to violence in this country i think you know it when you see it but what i would say is genocide is a crime anywhere it is one of the mm -hmm. truly international crimes everybody is subject to the universal crime of genocide and there are people currently calling for genocide at British, American, Western universities all around. And I would say, come on, guys, look, I get there's some tricky marginal cases here. Genocide is out mm. and calling for saying a woman is a woman is probably in. Uh, and I don't think either of these categories of cases are actually tricky ones. Mm -hmm. Well, Sam, thank you so much for, for coming and sharing your thoughts there about free speech on campuses and the rise of anti-Semitism there. J Jonathan, what what do you make of this story? It's so hard to find that right balance, isn't it? But n not when it comes to genocide. Well, no, obviously genocide, calling for genocide is, is, a, is a bad thing. I, I suppose you could say, what is that? Is it an explicit call for genocide? Might be different from saying from the river to the sea, for example, um, uh, which uh, uh, some people uh, think is sort of code for genocide and that's sort of vigorously disputed. And I would also say there is a lot of genocidal talk on, on both sides, actually. You know, you have you know, a, you know, a sign saying, so sort of make Gaza Jewish again, for example. Is that a call for mm -hmm. genocide? You know, look, would, would, would you ban that person from coming onto to university campuses? I think that a broader problem that we have here is that a lot of the free speech advocates, I'm not talking about Sam here, um, but I don't know Sam, but a lot of the free speech advocates in government are really advocates for free speech, for speech that they agree with. And when it comes to speech they disagree with, strangely, um, they seem to want to ban it quite a lot. You know, you have, I've seen Tory MPs who sort of go on about cancel culture and then call for teachers to be sacked <laughs> for things that they say in the classroom. This is nonsense. Either mm -hmm. you believe in free speech or you don't. Mm -hmm. One thing I would say as a general principle is that no one has the right to a platform. Everyone has mm -hmm. the right to speak, but not everyone has the right to a microphone. And so I don't believe in sort of you know, persecuting people for what they say. I think that actually we've gone way too far in this country prosecuting people for what they sort of say online because it's the idea of publishing something like you're publishing in a book. I think that we need to be a lot more lenient with that kind of thing. I think that obviously calls for violence should be prosecuted. You know, calls for mm -hmm. you know, to inciting murder, all, all that I stuff. I think that is common those sense. Are, those are it? those are crimes anyway. They've always been crimes, but I think we need to be a lot more sort of free in free speech, and that applies to people across mm -hmm. the board.